my eyelashes still frozen. Standing on sea ice in the middle of the Arctic Ocean, 150 miles away from the nearest civilization, and I got here by flying on a plane designed to land on that ice. How cool is that? And before I show you how I camped, let me show you some of the cool stuff I did. Never in a million years would I see myself sledding in the Arctic and being pulled by a snowmobile. But that's just a daily activity here as we adjust to living and camping on moving ice. Our campsite consisted of about eight tents called Arctic ovens, which were insulated and actually pretty warm. At night, we got a gorgeous view of the Aurora Borealis and woke up to amazing sunrises. We couldn't feel it, but on average, the ice moved at least two miles per day and about 10 miles since I got here. Plus, I got to joyride in a helicopter to take pictures. Right now I'm even further in the Arctic Circle. We're on a field expedition, waiting for some submarines to pop up through the ice. Took a quick helo flight to see this submarine in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. There are actually two behind me. You can only see one right now, but the other one is kind of moving back that way. So you can kind of see it, but you will see it in a second. One thing about being in the Arctic, the weather changes quickly. It was sunny a little while ago, and now you can't see a thing. Behind me, in front of me, to my left, to my right, you can only see like 20 yards. Look at this. You can't see anything. And I know it's an irrational thing to think about and highly unlikely, but I can't stop thinking about there being a polar bear like 20 feet from me, and I can't see it. Like I said before, you can't feel the ice moving, but you can certainly hear it. Watching the ice shift is like seeing tectonic plates in action, and frankly, it's a little scary. By hanging over the edge and sticking my camera in the water, you can see how thick the ice was and how it was starting to shift. I showed you how I spent my days here, but I'm sure a lot of you have this question. So let me give you a bathroom tour. And no, we didn't pee in the snow. Inside, there are three portable stalls for you to do your business. There's toilet paper, and there's wag bags for your number two. I think of wag bags as basically dog bags for humans. They are used to collect and carry your waste in the wilderness. 
You can pretty much use them anywhere, and they're great for camping when you don't have a bathroom. The way it works is pretty simple. You get two plastic bags, one to use as your toilet, and the other as kind of an extra trash bag to package it all up. Peeing was a much easier process. Just aim for the bucket and dump a little bit of the sand that kind of acts as a natural clotting or gelling agent. Oh, and I forgot to mention there's a waste barrel used for wag bags, and when it's full or when it's time to break down camp, it's placed back on the plane, poop pee and all, and disposed back in Alaska. This has been one of the most incredible experiences of my life. Flying back to Alaska, I had to ask myself if I'd do it again, and the answer is 100% yes. Maybe next time we'll go the opposite direction, towards Antarctica, and I can bring Sarah along.